Well, what I was playing in my mind, I was listening to music in my mind, and this song in particular was uh, Window Seat by Erica Badu. Hey. Quest Love, another one of my favorite drummers, did hey. such an amazing job. I think he just has such a distinct sound of his drums in general, but I think I was just really imagining the piano that is happening, those piano stabs. One thing that you might also notice about me is I move a lot with the music I'm playing. And it works as data for me, because if it doesn't make me move, it's probably not gonna make you move either. A lot of how I compose as a drummer, A, it comes from what other people are playing, but also it is from taking what, what exists already, which is the beat. You have the beat and then you have who I am and what feels natural to me. So if I have a feeling that tells me to add a little ghost note on the snare, I obey it. No matter what I do, it just feels natural because that's what we really want. We want authenticity and for it to be natural. As I begin to feel different, so does the music. And so I just continue to adjust until it feels right. I put a little bit of personality and that's what allows it to happen is when you assess how you feel and just channel it through your instrument. Dynamic contrast is also very vital and important to the feeling of the music and to the feeling of the beat that you're playing. There's a certain crack that the snare has that will translate differently if it is played at a different dynamic. It's great to practice all beats at different dynamics. Naturally, as a musician, you wanna play louder because it allows you to, I guess, get all of the aggression out and feel more, or at least it maybe even if I do a deeper dive. It might actually just cover up some things, honestly. It might actually cover up how you feel. But the key thing and the most challenging thing I find is being able to have the same amount of intensity at a lower volume. Still something I'm working on. And I'm the pocket queen. I feel like one of the drummers who has mastered this and actually Esperanza Spaulding uses him as her drummer, Otis Brown. He is absolutely amazing at being able to have a certain amount of intensity with his phrasing and things that sound very bold, but still not uh, too harsh on the eardrum or covering up the music. This is all building blocks to the fundamentals of being able to be of best service possible. A song that definitely stumped me for a while and it was funny because um, it was a musician friend that really challenged me to learn this. Uh, Still Shining by Busta Rhymes and it's produced by Jay Dilla. The first listen, it sounded rather simple. And I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. But when I listened closer and I realized how many times the kick pattern was changing up, It changes every five seconds. Like literally all of the kick patterns are just different each time. And I'm just like, wow, I'm like, whoa. And they're all so important. It's not even for no reason. It, it really went with what Busta was saying. It went with all of his phrasing, all the points where he cut out and came back in. Also, I would say the pocket of how the beat was programmed it's very interesting and somewhat challenging to try and emulate as a human. Even though I've, I feel like Jay Dilla is famous for making his drums sound so human-like, but I just think there's just such a uniqueness about it that uh, I don't know if I've mastered yet. <laughs> 